What's going on everybody? Uh, as many of you are well aware, the Partridge House is finished. And for those of you who aren't, I will go ahead and I will throw a link up in that top corner to the Partridge House playlist. And just to give you a quick recap of what it was, it was our last major project here at the Homestead. So we bought a house and we flipped it. And it's about an eight or a nine part series walking through our entire progress on that house. So you're probably wondering why I'm standing here in a back alley essentially next to a giant lake, um, which our back alley always is. And that's because I'm actually standing in front of our next major project. So with that being said, let me introduce you to our next project. And yes, you are correct, it is a garage. You're probably thinking, you know, it's a garage. What big project or fun project can that be? And that's where you're wrong because this garage is not just any garage. Well, I mean, this garage is any garage. It's, it's garbage. But the new garage is not just any garage. The new garage is gonna be something special, something cool. And this project really means a lot to me because this is my own garage and my property. And I've been waiting to complete this project for nearly five years, ever since we bought the house. And the cool thing is this is a project unlike anything I've tackled myself and anything like we've done at the homestead before and that's because we're not renovating. We're actually going to tear this down and start completely from scratch. But before we did that, I thought we'd walk you guys through and show you what we had before, what it looks like, why we don't like it, and what we're planning to build. So from this side, it looks like really any other standard two-car garage, you know? It's just not facing the back alley, it's facing a little parking pad over there, which is annoyance number one, because making that corner off of our back alley into that garage is next to impossible. But where it really gets special is when we head into the backyard. So let's go take a look now. So when you look at it from this side is when things really get interesting. So we've got all these random jut outs here and believe it or not, that's not actually built on a concrete foundation or pad or anything at all. It's sitting on kind of like wood slats so the mice love to get in. And then we've got this special angle which prevents you from actually being able to park a car in there at all. And never mind that, you like that curved roof? That is some fancy architecture for you. You know, how many people can say they've got a garage with a oh, optical illusion or a curved roof on it. Number three is this puddle that forms every spring that you see here behind me. It doesn't matter. We clean the snow off this driveway all winter long. It doesn't matter. We get an absolute puddle there. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's just a grading problem, not a garage problem. And you are correct. But if we were to grade this properly, it would actually mean covering the entrance into the garage there as well as the man door on the other side really rendering grading kind of pointless because then it would just drain everything into the garage. So at least it's draining not into the garage right now, but we wind up with a lake. And the biggest reason I hate the garage most of all is that I need to look at it every day out the back windows of my house. It is hideous, it is ugly, it doesn't function properly, and I can't wait for it to come down. So let's dive in for a minute and show you guys what we're planning to build so you can kind of see where we're starting and where we're going to go throughout the entire process. Alrighty, so before we jump into design, I just wanted to take a minute and talk about the bylaws that we have to follow and you probably have to follow in your area as well. So whether it's your neighborhood or your, your county or your city, there's specific bylaws that must be followed. So for our case, some of the major ones are side setbacks, rear setbacks, distance to the house, height, and site coverage and that's really where the hiccup came for us was in site coverage you know we had no problem with our rear setbacks or our side setbacks our height is well within the bylaws but we are much bigger on our site coverage than we're allowed so in the mature neighborhood that we live in we have specific development rules and one of them is you are not supposed to cover more than 12 percent of the site with uh, secondary structure now we have proposed covering 18 percent of our site so we had to apply with variance and we'll know if the development permit fully comes through in a few days here, so fingers crossed. But on to the design itself. So as I've mentioned before, we are planning to build a triple car garage. 
but not just any type of garage. I want this garage to be kind of ultra functional. I, I want it to be the everything garage. So the first major change we're gonna make is we're gonna flip the garage from the way it's facing now to facing the back alley. I don't wanna have to make that tiny right angle turn anymore. I wanna be able to drive straight into the garage, but I don't wanna lose the driveway. So what we've done is we've taken our single side and we've actually set it back about 12 feet. So with the driveway and with that extra 12 feet, we'll have a decent little parking pad where we'd still be able to fit a car outside. And the other big thing I wanted to do with doing the triple car garage and setting one of the sides back here is it allows us to change our roof line. So from the back now, we don't have this kind of big, straight, perfectly rectangular wall with this large looming and hanging roof staring you in the face. Uh, we actually wind up with a little bit of variation. So if we kind of look straight on, and this would be the look we'd see from our backyard, we have only a small section of roof now that we see, and then the rest of it will be just the exterior finishes of the garage. So what we can do is we can kind of create and play with this, these exteriors to vary them up a little bit so they don't look like one monotonous area. So a couple examples would be, so we have one type of finish on the lower section here, and then we switch it up in the peaks. We could add a, you know some craftsman detail in the peak to give it a little bit of oomph and a little bit of character. Lots of little things like that to just stop it from looking like a giant wall. So while we're looking at the back, there's a couple other things I wanted to chat about as well. So one being the door. We've placed the door specifically on the double car side, and we'll get into that more a little bit later on. The second major thing I want to talk about is the transom windows. So I didn't want to use regular windows down lower, just in case someone got into our backyard and was able to see in the garage that, you know, they see bikes or the golf clubs or snowboards or whatever that's in there. And it, it kind of allured to be able to break in and steal them if you wanted to. With transit windows, they're kind of out of sight, out of mind, but we still get all the benefits of the natural light pouring in. So one of the other big things with design that we wanted to do is play around with the roof trusses and not just use kind of standard trusses. So for our garage, we've gone with what's called a scissor truss or a vaulted ceiling truss on the single car side. And the reason for that is eventually I want to put a four post lift in here, but I want to have enough height that I can actually get all the benefits out of the four post lift and use it to its full potential. So we're going to have 10 foot walls as our main section here. And then with the vaults and the ceiling, it'll give us an extra three or four feet. So, you know, we'll have a decently high ceiling. Plus it'll just feel nice and open and airy and big and not kind of like a stuffy small garage. On the double car side, we wanted to add some functionality to these trusses as well. So we wanted to be able to use them for storage, but not have full storage trusses that increase the height. So what our truss designers have done is they've increased the strength of the bottom cord by switching it from a two by four to a two by six. So now, not only are they rated to hold up the snow and the weight of the roof, they're actually able to hold some weight of storage as well. So it just increases some functionality on that side as well. So now you're probably wondering, you know, that double car side being 32 feet long seems really big for kind of a smaller neighborhood lot in the middle of the city. And the reason we wanted to set it up this way is we have three things we always want to be able to park inside, but we wanted to kind of have some functionality to still be able to park my truck. So we went 32 feet long in this case, specifically so we can park the tent trailer, we can park my wife's SUV on the double car side, we can build a small little gym and bouldering wall into the back section of the garage, we can now hang our canoe inside and get it outside of the, out of the weather. But should we be off camping somewhere, I'm able to pull my truck in here and it'll perfectly fit without having any issues. So then on the single car side, as I mentioned, we went with a vaulted ceiling because eventually I'd like to put that four post lift in and still have room to you know park another car underneath it so in this case i've got my my really small 1974 mgb roadster and if we put that up on the lift we could easily get another car underneath it and you know park four vehicles in this three car garage so that starts kind of creating a lot of different uses for the garage instead of just parking vehicles in here and that's really what we're after calling it the everything garage because our goal is to have this garage do everything our house can't all right, so those are the plans. They've been submitted to the city. We're back outside here. We do have a tentative development permit. We are waiting for our variants to go through. Uh, we have about a week more or so on that, and hopefully none of our neighbors complain. Uh, but since we're back outside, I just wanted to show you guys kind of where it's gonna sit on the property, because we are gonna lose a little bit more of this backyard, and it's gonna stick about 10 feet further, kind of around the hammock pergola you see over there. And it's really not gonna have a huge impact on the space, other than it taking up more of the backyard, but 
all we're really gonna lose is a little bit of grass and some of our garden beds. And we can rearrange those garden beds pretty easily and just swing them around in front of the garage. And as far as the grass area goes, you know, the kids spend most of their time ripping around out on the bikes or on the scooters out front anyways. And when they do wanna kick a ball or, you know, throw the baseball around, we're just a block and a half away from the park. So we can just make a quick trip there and, you know, solve any problem that that might be. But this everything garage is really gonna solve a lot of our day-to-day -day issues, storage, parking, all the things that every family encounters. So we hope you guys stick around, join us for this project, hit that subscribe button and click that little bell icon so you get notifications every time we release a new video. And we'll see you in the next one.